drop down and call on me. The Lord is worthy to be praised. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will be glad and rejoice. And David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Let some drop. Let some drop. Let some drop. Hallelujah.
that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And, the, and if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Let's read over sight the Righteous Church of God mission statement. Let's begin. The Righteous Church of God is a body of baptized believers who are encouraged to grow in their relationship with Jesus Christ. Through our prayers, worship, and fellowship, we strengthen families, minister to the community's needs, and reach and teach each new generation the gospel of Jesus Christ. God bless you, Pastor Butler, is coming now to continue us in worship. Again, what a joy to be in the Lord's house. And thank you, Reverend Brooks, for <clears throat> carrying us into worship. And once again, for our praise team that always does an outstanding worship or service. If you have your uh, communion, no matter where you are, as stated, we read our communion scripture. We want to invite all of our friends and family members to share in our communion. If you are listening by way of Facebook, or whatever face, social media you have. You may not be a member of the Righteous Church of God, but you certainly are welcome to the Lord's table. Amen. For this is not our table. It's the Lord's table. So for that reason, we practice open communion. Open communion means that you are a believer in Christ. You are certainly welcome to participate in our communion service because it says as often as you do this you do this in remembrance of him not a church not a pastor not a group not an organization as often as we do this we do this in remembrance of him and the word remember as we say often it means to remember as if we were there so don't take our communion lightly or something that gee, we just do it is a memorial established by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. While you prepare yourselves, we'll have a brief word of communion prayer. Father God, bless now this communion. Help us to reflect on what you did for us, what you are doing, and what you are continuing to do for us. Bless these elements, we pray, God, that as we take them, not out of routine, but we take them with meaning in our heart. We take them with an understanding and the purpose that what you did for us on Calvary still stands as a memorial in our life. And every time we do this, as often as we do this, we do this in remembrance of what you have done for us. So we remember even today how you forgive us, how you restore, how you draw us back in. We remember when we were sinking and you picked us up. So we remember, oh God, what you have done. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. On that night when he was betrayed with his disciples, he took bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body that was broken for you. Eat ye all of it. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Hallelujah, Jesus. If it had not been for you, God, where would we be? And then likewise, he reached for that designated cup that was set aside at each Passover meal. After the meal, they will reach for that cup and pass it one to another as they remember the Passover in Egypt. But Jesus interrupted the process and he took the cup and he said, this is the cup of my blood that was shed for the remission of sin. Yes. Hallelujah. He astonished them. He amazed them. No more will there be goats, turtle doves, and blood of bulls. That only covered sin, but my blood comes 
to take it away. We hear John say, look, behold, the Lamb of God cometh to take away the sins of the world. So God, on today, as we reflect on what you've done, reflect on Calvary, reflect on the fountain that's still running, that still forgives, that still restores, that still gives us joy, still forgiveness. He took that cup. He said, this is the cup of my blood of the New Testament. Drink ye all of it. just restoring us, allowing us to remember as if we were there. We, we see your blood stained feet and hands. We see the blood flowing from your side and from your head. We remember, O oh God, that you died that we might live. You who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. So we thank you, Heavenly Father, for this communion moment. Thank you even for your presence right now. We feel it not only in the sanctuary, but whatever the saints are gathered. We hold our head and we say thank you because it's your blood that washes and cleanses us in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we just thank you today and we bless your name. So thank you once again for just tabernacling with us for a little while. Thank you for your peace and your joy. And God, we give you the praise. You, and we give you all the glory. Because it all belongs to you. In the name of Jesus. We thank you right now. In you, Jesus' name, amen. 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 Just before our praise team come with you at our sermonic selection, just want to once again remind you all that our Tuesday Bible study continues at 6.45 on Tuesday and our Zoom Bible study is 7.30 on Thursday. Please join in with us and as we say each and every Sunday, thank you so much for your gifts of love. Thank you for your tithing. Thank you for donating to the Righteous Church of God. We appreciate it so much. Please know that we even appreciate your presence realizing that there are many, many more places at this hour, but thank you for sharing with us again on this day. Our prayers certainly are again with the Pulley family, the Bush family, the Mills family, and any other person that have suffered loss, even now for those that are continuing bereavement. We remember in prayer in the name of Jesus. Please, Righteous Church, let's keep Sister Theola Huff in prayer. She's still in the hospital. She's, I talked to her this morning. She's sounding strong. But let's keep her in prayer. As well as all of our seniors. We appreciate them so much. Let's keep them in prayer. In the name of Jesus. Please go to our website. RCGministries.org. There you can get further instructions on how to give to the Righteous Church. Givelify. Givelify is one option. You can mail it to the church is yet another. Or you can use the mobile app on the phone. But whatever you give, however you give, we appreciate it so much and we value every donation. So we want to say thank you right now in the name of Jesus. So Father God, bless every gift and giver. In Jesus' name, amen. And finally, while you're on our website, if you have a prayer request or a prayer need, put it there. We review it in confidence. We make sure we pray for your need. We also share it with our conference call, prayer call, which is every Tuesday at 730 you are invited to participate in our church-wide conference call. Again, the details are on our website. Thank you once again. Our praise team is going to carry us in worship. And following this selection, the next voice that you will hear will be that of Reverend Anthony Brooks, the assistant pastor of the Righteous Church of God. What a joy. What a joy. What a pleasure. We thank you so much for all of your faithfulness, all of your service, 
all the things that he does. We give God all the praise. For the God that we serve is an awesome God. He'll raise up servants for you. He'll raise up friends for you. He'll raise up preachers for you. He'll give you joy in the name of Jesus. So while we salute him today and we thank God for him, be in prayer today as he delivers the word of God. Come on and carry us for this worship. We're going to sing I'm grateful. We're going to sing I'm grateful. Are you grateful today? Are you grateful today? Has the Lord been good to you? And all that he has. Oh, we're so grateful. Come on and carry us in worship.
Yeah, uh, Tom Hanks is a, he's a bad boy, he's a great actor. Yeah. But in 2000, Zemeckis directed this movie called Castaway. I wonder if you saw the movie Castaway. One of my favorite, one of my favorite movies. Uh, just stay with me, we're going somewhere. In this movie, uh, Tom Hanks, his character's name is Chuck Nolan. And he is an executive for FedEx. He is a trainer, oftentimes training people overseas to keep the packages moving. Uh, we kind of need Tom now because FedEx has kind of fallen off a little bit. And U.S. Mail has fallen off. UPS has fallen off. Sometimes, and I love Amazon. Amazon pretty good. I guess it will. Amazon come to my place two, three times a week, praise the Lord. But FedEx has kind of fallen off. But, but Chuck is an executive. He's, he's in management. He's teaching people all over the world. Uh, in this story, it's set around the Christmas, New Year season. Chuck has a girlfriend, uh, Kelly Frears, uh, played by Helen Hunt, also a very good actress. She's been in a number of things that we like. But in this movie, Chuck is uh, at dinner with Kelly and her family. And he gets a, a, a message on his pager. We need you immediately in Malaysia, of all places. Malaysia. So the text message means he has to leave dinner, go to the airport, and take right off. They load up the car with his stuff. Kelly, his girlfriend, is driving. She takes him to the airport. Now, little did she know at this holiday dinner that Chuck was going to propose marriage. They had been dating for a good little while. He was loved. This, he was in love. This was his boo. I want you to be mine. He was going to propose. But he got this page, and all of a sudden, life changed, and now he's at the airport. As he gets out the car, he gives Kelly a box. It's the wedding ring. It's the engagement ring. Mm -hmm. And she says to him, I'm not going to open it until you get back. Uh -huh. That's right. Chuck says to her, I'll be right back. Uh -huh. I'll be right back. Subsequently, the story goes on, he gets on the plane with a crew of maybe five or six, and off they go in on their way to Malaysia. While they're on the plane, the plane encounters turbulence. They enter a storm. I'll be honest, I could stop right there. I could stop right there and preach for 20 minutes. Have you ever, have you ever found yourself in a storm? out of nowhere. Yeah. Have you ever been blindsided by some bad medical news? Have you ever been blindsided by some financial problems? Have you ever been, been, been caught off guard by a circumstance in the family, uh, a divorce, a relationship issue, something that you didn't see coming? Have you ever been caught off guard by death? Yes. Righteous in 2020. We buried seven members of our church. None of it was COVID related. Nonetheless, seven people out of one congregation, you're gonna notice that. Yes. Certain families were touched. Pastor Bubba this morning prayed for the Pulley family. My God. My God. Three siblings <laughs> within six months. Uh, uh, Pastor Craig Key, they're probably in service this morning, lost his mother and his father within four months. Right, yes. That's a storm. Yes. It's a storm. Yes. And it came out of nowhere. Yes. Uh, last year with the whole, the whole COVID-19, we didn't see it coming. That's right. It, uh, the word on the street is that what they could have been warned. Mm -hmm. We ain't gonna bother with that. Y'all know. Right. Yes, We're not gonna right. bother with it. Don't make me say it, Sherry. <laughs> I'll just say orange. I'll just, I'll just say orange. I'll just, I'll just say the color orange. Don't yeah. make me say it. Don't make it. But we could have been warned, yes. Yes. but we didn't see it coming. And now we're scrambling. Everybody's getting shots and taking shots. We've been wearing masks all year long, uh, but it kind of caught us. Huh? 
off guard. It, yes. it was a storm. Uh, yes. See, we like the storms that we can see coming. Yes. The clouds darken a little bit. Uh, the winds begin to blow uh, uh, boisterous. Uh, you got a little warning, but when yes. it comes out of nowhere, uh, sometimes it's hard to deal with. It's hard to deal with. Yes. So back to our story. So ultimately, they're on this plane, and they begin to rock and roll and shake back and forth, and they think they're going to make it. You hear the calls of Mayday, and the pilots are fighting with the plane. Ultimately, the plane would go down. The plane would crash, and Chuck would be the sole survivor. Look here, I hear God. Have you ever been in a circumstance? After all that you have been through, you felt all by yourself. Huh? In a church, watch this, full of people, and it feels like it's just you. Yes. In an empty church yes. with no people, yes. and it feels like it's just you. You lay in bed at night and you, you can't sleep and you turn the lights on and you turn the TV off. It's a dance. You turn the TV off. You turn the lights back out. Then you turn them back on. You can't get any rest. Can't get any peace because you're worried right. and you're concerned about the storm that you've been in. So ultimately this, this plane now crashes and Chuck, our star of the show of the movie, washes up on a beach. And for four years, he is on a deserted island by himself. Uh, he has to learn to feed himself. He has to become resourceful. He has to learn how to fish. He had no fishing experience. He had to learn how to make clothes and shelter for himself. Yes. He got caught up. Yes. He got caught up in a storm. So for four years, I'm going someplace. He's out here. He's all by himself. Uh, there was some debris from the ship <laughs> that had washed up. And one of the things that had washed up past the butler was a volleyball. Yes. Was a volleyball. And, and uh, uh, Chuck had uh, cut his hand on a rock and he went to grab the, the, the volleyball and the imprint of his hand. And he took his finger and licked it and began to fashion the shape of the hand into a yep. face. Yes. And you know what brand the ball was? Wilson. So he decided that he would call this ball Wilson. He needed somebody to talk to. I, I, I hear God. Have you ever been in a place that you had to even just talk to yourself? I hear David say sometimes you got to even encourage yourself in the Lord. Sometimes you ever been there? You had to literally talk to yourself. You're in, it, you're in your own house and you're telling yourself, you're asking questions. What in the world is going on? And if you ain't careful, you'll answer yourself. So what he did was he made a ball. He took this ball and made a friend. And all day long and all night long, he would, he would talk to this ball, Wilson. He also had some mementos, some things of the past. He had a picture of his girlfriend in an old stopwatch, and he would look at her uh, every night. He was trying to comfort himself. Have you ever laid in bed and tried to comfort yourself and remember some days past when it was all right? And, and, and what you do is you tell yourself one of these days is going to be all right. It's just That's like right. church. Yeah. Sometimes we go through some things, but we have to remind ourselves. I have to. We have to speak to ourselves that it's going to be all right. Yeah. The old folks would say, "After a while," and I need mean, "after a while" to be right now. But that ain't like God. God yeah. wants. God wants you to wait a little while. Yeah. There's a little power in the waiting. Yeah. And the Bible says that they that wait yeah. on the Lord. Yeah. And the Bible says that patience has her perfect work. Church. Sometimes the blessing. Yeah. Is in the way. Come on, come on. I tell you a story one time. I used to watch my grandfather get off the bus and come home from his good government job. And I would sit, y'all know nothing about this. I would sit at the screen door huh, and look for him to come. Oh, that, okay, you don't feel that? Like, how about when, when payday? We didn't used to have direct deposit. You remember looking out the window waiting for the mailman to come? Because you know once he came, Eric, you don't know nothing about it. You don't know nothing about it. 
Once your paycheck came, the check comes on Thursday at 3 o'clock, and he'll come to mailman. He look at your wife and say, Oh, we good, baby. Check coming. Check coming right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But sometimes, but the blessing, the blessing is in the waiting. That's right. Yeah, so for four years, he's out on his island. And he made a he made a friend, Wilson. <laughs> he opened up some other boxes. He got very creative. He made rope out of twine. He made rope out of VCR tape. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He ate coconut until he couldn't eat no more. He finally had to learn how to fish. He fished with a spear. He became very resourceful. And in faith, sometimes God does that to us. He allows us to go through things and he builds character because we are resourceful. Uh, we have to tell ourselves it is going to be better after a while. The sun will. The sun will come out yes. tomorrow. So in the course of time, uh, he made some attempts. He figured if he could get over the over the surf, the, the obstacles, if he could get by the breakers and, and fight the wind, perhaps he could row out to the shipping lanes. And if he could get there, perhaps he could be rescued. I'm going somewhere. Uh, so in the process of time, he actually made it. He got himself into the shipping lanes. And there a ship was able to pick him up yes. and, and Chuck Nolan, our star of the movie, was rescued. Yes. Well, but he had been gone, church, for four years. And in the process of time, they had declared him dead. Yes. They looked for, for him for over, I think it was 500,000 square miles. They looked, they searched, but they couldn't find him. Finally, we don't have a body. Somebody says we have to declare him dead. But sad news, bad news, the company laws, Kelly, his girlfriend, who he loved in the process of time, she got married and had children. Well, they found him, and the word went out that, hey, we have found Chuck Nolan. Everybody rejoiced. Chuck, Chuck, we thought you were dead. We thought you were dead. They had a party for him, had food for him, and they put him up in a fancy hotel. That night, of uh, the first night of after him being rescued, he had showered, he had, he had shaved, and he went to go to sleep, but he couldn't sleep in the bed. That's right. Because for four years, he had been sleeping on the ground. Yes. So his past, <laughs> <y'all don't get laughs> wait, his wait. past was still lingering. Yes. He's delivered, yes. but he doesn't really know that he's delivered. Uh -huh. He's been tainted by the things that he's been through. Yes. They gave him crab legs, and he had been eating fish with, with no seasoning, and they, they put out this spread. But lo and behold, uh, one of the buddies, the, one of the guys that was really close to him said, Kelly's here. And he said, oh my God, I haven't seen her for four years. What am I going to say to her? He did not know that Kelly had gotten married, that Kelly had moved on. This was the love of, love of his life. Yes. He had told her, I'll be right back. But circumstances came up and changed the narrative. We almost done, watch this. We're gonna shout in a minute, watch. So, the story goes on, he gets to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Kelly. She said to him, Chuck, you said you would be right back. I thought you were dead. You know? And so, she finally said to him, I kept your car. She gave me back the car. And they had a hug and an embrace. And she said to him, what, if, what am I supposed to do? He says, you got your family. You need to go be with your husband, be a mom to your kids, and just enjoy life. And so he departed. He met up with his friend uh, at the company. The friend said to him, here we go, God bless us today. The friend said to him, simply, Chuck, what are you going to do now? Pastor Butler, he looked at Chuck, and he, uh, he looked at his friend. He said, I'm going to just keep breathing. Oh, yeah. uh, oh, yeah. Keep yeah. breathing. Yes. 
That thing ministered to me. <laughs> Have faith in God. Yes. After yes. all that we've been through. Uh -huh. Huh? What do you expect me to do now? One day at a time. Yes. Sweet Jesus. Yes. It's a word for you, baby girl. It's a word for yes. you. Yes. What are you going to do now? Yes. Keep breathing. Yes. Huh? Yes. It's been working for you this far. Yes. You have believed God so far. Yes. You've been calling on his name for yes. a long time. Yes. The best thing you can do is just keep on yes. breathing. Right. The Bible said that God breathed yes. into us. That means the inspiration of God. He breathed into us and we became a living soul. I'm going to tell you right now, you go into situations, keep breathing. You can't see your way, keep breathing. Calm yourself down and count to ten, but you keep breathing. God has not left you out in the dark. He has not left you out in the cold. You just keep breathing. Uh, God is here for you. God is here for us, and he will not let you fail. The Bible says that no weapon that is formed against you will be able to prosper. You keep breathing. You stand on his word. You believe in his word. You believe what he tells you to do. You keep breathing in the face of trials, in the face of financial situations. You keep breathing. You stuck in the air, and you breathe it back out. God is with you. He will never leave you. Don't forsake you. I wish I had somebody that knows that God is on our side. And that no weapon, we said it before, no weapon that is formed against us shall be able to prosper. You keep breathing. What are you going to do now? I'm going to stand. Have you done all to do? I'm going to stand. I'm standing on his word. That's your word today. Look at somebody in your house and tell them, baby, keep breathing. It won't always. Way. It won't always be this way. I'm so mad at trouble. Trouble doesn't last always. You keep breathing. Just keep breathing. Whatever that means for you, you find a passage of scripture and you rest on it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will. He will direct your path. Keep breathing when there's nothing else. When there's nothing else to do, when all hope is gone, keep breathing. Hallelujah. Deacon Jolly had a scare, went to the hospital this week. Brother Jolly, keep breathing. Hallelujah. Oh my God, the only people that can breathe are the people that are alive. So as long as I'm still living, I'm going to have faith in God. My soul looks back and wonder how, how we got over. Keep paying bills. COVID came to your house. Keep breathing. Keep breathing. Watch this, Peggy. They had to, they had to give you a ventilator to help you breathe. But you kept breathing. You're still in the game. And after all hope is gone, my God, my God. Yes. Some years ago, almost 30 years ago, Pastor Butler, my grandfather, Elder Dick, died, the founder of our church. One of the strongest male personalities I ever knew in my life. Six months later, his son died, Billy Vicks. Yes. I'm like, God, yes. what are we going to do now? Yes. But you know what? Hey, let's tune up. Let's tune up, Curtis. We're going to keep breathing. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Some years ago, my own father died and my mother died. And I thought to myself, what am I going to do now? Yeah. And I'm going to keep breathing, baby. I'm going to keep breathing. I'm going to tell you right now, no matter what the report is, keep breathing. As long as you're breathing, you have hope. As long as you can draw breath, you can, you can make it. Keep breathing, church. 
righteous keep breathing. We've been through a lot. Oh God, we've been through a lot. The Bully family, keep breathing. Keep breathing. There were nine of you, and now there are four. You keep breathing. You keep believing. You have faith in God. When the children call you and say, Mom and Dad, what is going on? You're not the first, and you will not be the last. Yeah. Uh, uh, Minister uh, uh, Evangelist Holly, a number of years ago, seemed like four or five people just, just, just went on to be with the Lord, all close together. But guess what she did? She kept breathing. Didn't give up on God. Don't stop believing. See, because we walk by what? And not by sight. Lord, have mercy. When we're living this life by what we observe, by what we would see, we'd have quit a long time ago. But we've come too far. We've come too far. Yes. Lord, have mercy. I don't feel no way tired. Come too far. Yeah, yeah. I don't feel no way tired. Any key open? Open the door, bro. Go ahead, Doc. Great, the Lord.
shout for praise out there. We're going to do all through the word of God. Another hand shout for praise for the man of God for allowing God to use him today. What a message. Keep on breathing. Some person got all the way down the head to be resuscitated, but yet they kept on breathing. What a joy. What a delight. Thank you for sharing with us. Thank you, Reverend Anthony Brooks, for all that you do at the Righteous Church of God. I'm just going to take a minute to say, Reverend Anthony Brooks is indeed not only an asset, he's a brick, he's a pillar. He's part of this ministry. He's in everything that helps the ministry to go. And we certainly appreciate his dedication, his faithfulness, and all the things that he do to reach out to the members, work with the pastor, work with all the auxiliaries, make sure everything is in order for worship. He is our minister of worship. And I just want to shout out today to tell everybody we are blessed. You all are blessed to have the Reverend Anthony Brooks. Hallelujah. That's the righteous church of God. And on top of all that, he's an anointed preacher. We thank God so much. Yes, yes, yes. I thank God for him. We're doing such a great job. They're going to close us out in whatever song God lays on their heart as we leave this place, but never the presence of God. Thank you, righteous church of God. Thank you for visiting to us. Thank you for sharing. I want to thank you all so much for once again tuning in to what God has to say to the church today. I will see you at 6.45 on Tuesday. We continue our Bible study, and God is going to continue to minister to us. Bless now, God, as we leave this place, but never your presence. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Just stay with us for a minute as our prayer team closes out in worship. And as they close us out in music and worship, you ought to praise and thank God right where you are that you can breathe. You can breathe in and you can breathe out. You ought to thank God. The God that we serve is an awesome God.